When you start living with the end in mind, everything starts to change. What are people going to say about you? What message is your life going to speak when you're long gone? Because you weren't born by accident. You didn't just happen to be where you're at and happen to watch this video. There is always a reason. Officially begin. So guys, I just want to welcome you to our Fuse Life podcast episode number 24. My oh. guest today looks like Jesus, has a heart like Jesus, and uh, is an amazing guy. So I'm just going to introduce him right now. Matt Lansdowne, thank you so much for coming on here today and for your time with us. Yeah, sure thing, man. Awesome to be here. Boom. For those that don't know you, why don't you just uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you ended up where you're at. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, well, yeah, my name is Matt Lansdowne. Uh, I was born at a young age. And, um, and uh, sorry, this is a lame dad joke, but I am a dad. And I have, um, I have three daughters and uh, one beautiful wife. And I've got a nine-year-old, a six-year-old, and a three-year-old. And we started our church up here with another uh, couple who are, who are uh, friends of ours. Uh, Bethel Church, New Zealand, up here in Whangarei. We started that nine years ago um, with our friends. And so um, we're uh, helping to lead that up here. And, um, yeah, and, and life is good. I also travel a lot and speak and minister. And um, I love art, uh, so I'm also an artist. And my wife is a photographer, and we, uh, we, we, love, um, uh, we love all the – all the different avenues of creativity that we get to experience, and uh, we just love what we get to do. We love we love seeing Jesus get the get the get his full reward. So, yeah, yeah. So it's um, good times. Boom. So just before some of you were already here, we were talking about some miracles. Matt was sharing that there were miracles that went down on the weekend at their church. I um, maybe we can start on that. Like, how did you get into this realm of miracles and? You know, was yeah. it always normal for you? Or? Um, no, it totally was wasn't always normal for me. But um, I grew up in a in an atheist family. Uh, you know, now my mum, uh, now everyone but my dad is is born again. But um, but when I was a uh, boy, I it was all there was no mention of God at all. I mean, the first time I heard the name of Jesus was when I was eight years old. I had I didn't even know that that was the name of a person until I was mm. eight. Um, and so, uh, long story short, I got born again when I was 19. Well, I got, you know, I had encountered God before that, but I got baptized in the Holy Spirit and I, I had, uh, like the full blown born again experience when I was, when I was 19 in my car and it was super radical. Like, um, God just, I mean, yeah, it's hard to explain, but, um, I got filled with God. And I got delivered of demons. I got delivered of addictions. I got um, I got set free. I um, I all of a sudden, in a split second, I knew God, and it was just the most amazing experience of my life. And it's changed my whole life. It's why I'm doing what I'm doing today. And I said at that point, I said, God, I'm giving the rest of my life for the whole world to encounter what I've just encountered. Because I don't need wow. to just go to church. I don't need just an idea. I don't need religion. I don't need philosophy. I don't need um, self help mechanisms what they need before any of those things is they need a real relationship with you they need to know you like i've just come to know you experience you um and so so because of that it just launched me into um how do i give the world this kind of encounter like how do i take what's on the inside of me now as a result of this encounter in my car how do i take that out of me and and give it to people who haven't experienced it yet and so I started to read the stories of like John G. Lake and Smith Wigglesworth and all these revivalists that saw signs, wonders, and miracles, and that were leading people into dramatic encounters with God and life-changing encounters with God, and um, and that just started to stir me up. Mm. And then I connect. I, I uh, met a guy named Andy Piggott, who's um, he's he's uh, he's the guy that we're up here in Fangare. We started the church together. He's like my best buddy up here, and. Um, and he's he's a total legend, but he got born again in a really radical way as well. We ended up at the same church, and so we just ended up fueling each other's fire. Like we ended up going out together um, on the streets and just and just looking for people to pray for, looking for opportunities to bring people into encounters with God, and that and that sort of exploded into um, 
man is, Lord, if I could just see one miracle in my life, I'd be happy. It's mm. now come into uh, a lifestyle of the miraculous. Wow. Can you can you share with us the first time you saw something when you prayed and how and the mess you up? Or, or can you share that experience, one that you remember? Uh, yeah, yeah I, I remember clearly the first time I saw a miracle. But the first time I saw a miracle doesn't sort of paint the picture of – it was like God started me off on a um, – on a real highlight and then he brought me back to building from a seed to a tree like everything in the kingdom starts as a seed Mm. and if we steward the seed it becomes a tree and it bears Mm. fruit and so my first story it kind of began as like this is what the tree is going to look like and then it and then it came back to the seed and i stewarded the seed from there wow so so i i uh i had a pretty cool start but i was at a university (laughs) and i was leading a home group and um and well, I was leading a bunch of home groups and I was speaking at one of the home groups and I, I, um, um, I'd seen lots of miracles, but not through my hands. And this person said, said, um, you know, listen, I've been struck by lightning twice. Um, um, I've got Parkinson's disease. And what happens is everyone that has Parkinson's disease, it manifests differently. So mm. for, for this person, their arms would seize up. They would start curling up, and then they would go into an epileptic fit. Like a wow. And um, so I said, okay, cool. We're going to pray for you. So I went to – and all I knew was that you lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So I thought, yeah, I have to get my hands on this guy because that's mm. the only way that God heals the sick. That's what was in my head, mm. which is, I don't agree with now, but that's what I thought then. Yeah. And so I went to put my hands on his hands, and they got about um, about 15 centimeters away from his hands, and like a bolt of lightning hit him, he went flying across the room. He hit um, a decent-sized study kind of table that you'd kind of typical table that you'd see at a university. You could fit maybe six people around it. His head hit the table, flew through the air, hit hit the table, it hit the table so hard the table flew into the wall, and then he fell on the floor. And then I thought, oh no, I killed him. I just thought he's he dead. Oh no. So I, I went over and just checked, is he okay? And he was still breathing and stuff. So I left him there, prayed for someone else. While I was praying, he jumps off his feet, up onto his feet. And he's like, oh, my gosh, I had a vision. And the vision, there were angels and demons, and they were fighting over my life. And he's like hyperventilating. Yeah. You know? And I said, okay, well, let's pray for you, because I just thought I've got to get my hands on him. I prayed again. And same thing happened again. Flew off his feet again. And I thought, man, I can't get my hands on this guy. And I wasn't feeling anything, by the way. I was just feeling like I just want to get my hands on this guy. <laughs> and, uh, he, he jumps up again about two minutes later again, jumps up his feet, and he goes, I saw the second half of the vision, and the angels defeated the demons, and there was this clashing of swords and kind of a typical heavenly vision. And then um, third time I said, okay, well, I've still got to get my hands on you. <laughs> so I put my hands, I got his hands this time, laid hands on him, released the power of God, and um, which was just through a simple prayer. And then his hands started to seize up like they did before he'd go into a seizure. Mm. All of a sudden, at the end of the prayer, they went boom, and they just released. And he had no, um, it's the first time that it happened that he hadn't gone into a seizure. And uh, so he went to the doctors the next day, got all the tests, and he was um, uh, free from Parkinson's disease. Wow. So that was my first mi- miracle that I saw with my hands, that I saw through my own hands. Mm. Yes. Yeah. And then you had to get my hands into it. But. <laughs> yeah. And then, so you said that you had this big thing, then you had to rebuild from a seed. Um, yeah. How long did that process take? Oh, then from there, I, just, uh, I was just like, oh, we're just going after this. So that's when Andy and I would we, be like in the van, in um, the intern van, which was a, which was a, funny van um it barely worked though you had to you had to roll start it so you had to park it on a hill because um the the mission thing wouldn't work and um i think it only had a few gears left it was just a pretty old van and um uh and then we we started just finding people and just just practicing words of knowledge and getting some right and some wrong and people were like sore knees or sore elbows or a headache or Mm. uh you know uh um, just li- little, um, you know, it went from miracles. I think there's a difference between miracles and healing. It went from mm. that first one was like a miracle, 
and then the, then it went to just healing, ministering mm. healing, and um, and people started to get healed, and it just went, you know, it wasn't like we went to from Parkinson's disease to blind eyes and deaf ears overnight. It was like sore knees, sore hands, sore necks, headaches. Eventually, um, I think legs growing out, and then it went to. Um, um, I went to uh, like like diseases like like Parkinson's disease disappearing, and then it was things like tumors and deaf ears and blind eyes and things like that. So it's sort mm-hmm. of everything's just as easy for God, but I don't know. There's there's something about starting small and honoring the seed. Mm. So wow, boom, and now. I mean, maybe you can share some of what goes on now. Like you've been around the world the last month or two. You've been in different places. Mm. I don't know if there's any any story you'd like to share before we move into creativity. Yeah, um, the I think one of the most fun. Uh, you know, actually, I, I do travel a lot and lots of different places. Well, I mean, a lot for me. Um, I I I feel like I travel a lot, mm. um, and. Um, some of the coolest miracles that we've been seeing lately have actually been here at Bethel in our own church. So, mm. um, which I think is a cool testimony because a lot of people mm. say have said to me, "Oh, you know, you see miracles on all these mission trips. And what about at home, man? What about at home?" And my my testimony there is, man, at home it seems to be even better. Mm. Wow, the stuff is pumping overseas, but it's it's really ramping up at home too. So, um, there's some great miracles happening at home, but. In terms of um, the travel stuff, uh, one of my one of my favorite miracles, and this was kind of cool because it's the first time I've ever seen this, and it was just a few months ago, um, was in Myanmar, and it was uh, a six-year-old girl came to a meeting, and she had um, her eyeballs were too big for this for her sockets, mm. so you know how you can see white around the colorful part of my eyeball. Mm. Well, for her, there was no white. The colorful part took up the whole eye socket. That's how big wow. the eyeballs were. And so that's obviously causing problems. And um, we prayed for her, and her eyes went shoop, and shrunk back into um, back into the normal size, which, I mean, I, first of all, I've never, ever heard of someone with that kind of issue before. Mm. And secondly, it was just so cool. A six-year-old, I have a six-year-old daughter, so, you know, it immediately puts me, um, it feels close to home for me. And um, and to see her just get healed with her whole family around. Her family hasn't been at church for years and years. And um, first time in church, they only came because they heard miracles were happening. And just really cool stuff. So, um, wow. so that, was, that was a pretty fun story. Epic, man. That's so cool. We've got a few people commenting. Wow. Uh, what's up, Chris? A few people on here. So well, why don't we talk about creativity? Uh, what's been going on? I saw some of your art over the last six months. I think it's been different kinds of art pieces that you've been putting out. And what's the deal? What's going on? Yeah. Um, so um, you know, you asked me uh, what, what's really burning on my heart at the moment, and one of the things that really is burning on my heart is creativity, and that is for multiple different reasons. And I'll share some. I'll share some of them. But um, you know, obviously, we're creating the image of a creator. So to say, oh, you're a creative person and you're not a creative person is just not a helpful thing to do. Mm. Every single human being is creative in their own way. And so the question is not, am I creative? The question is, how am I creative? Mm. Like, what is my creativity? And every person listening and every person on the earth is creative in some way. It's just many people haven't discovered their creativity. Mm. And um, I was watching a documentary from a neuroscientist uh, not long ago on Netflix and he was saying uh, he, he's devoted his, his this season of his life into studying creativity and the effects on the brain and his, his conclusion is that not in between 90 and 100 percent of the world's um, of anxiety and depression in the world today is due to a disengagement from creativity mm. and this is a non-christian guy he said and he wouldn't relate it back to God but he would say human beings are designed he used the word designed, designed um, to be creative. And when we're not being creative, we are disengaged with ourselves. Mm. And so, wow. I mean, th- there's just a, for you to be yourself or for me to be myself means I must discover what is my creativity. 
and then I must engage with that. And only then do I fully feel, um, I suppose, in an easy way to describe it, as fulfilled in life. Mm. So God said to me, a lot of what I do is my creat- I mean, my, my preaching, a lot of what I do is my creativity. But, um, but since I was five years old, I've loved painting. Mm. And uh, I started doing graffiti art when I was 13. And I, and I, that's led me to doing, you know, mural art and things like that. And I, I've always loved painting, but I, I had done it for sort of really for sort of five, six years um, before the start of this year. And at the start of this year, God said to me, um, he said, he said, Matt, I want you to pick up your creativity again. Mm. And, um, and then he said this, he said, if you draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. And literally what he was saying is he was saying, I just want you to draw. I just want mm. you to commit to drawing, frequently drawing. Just draw your heart. Just draw whatever comes to you. Draw the revelations I give you. Draw what I'm speaking to you. Just draw what I'm saying. Mm. And so I just started doing that. And some of you might have seen, and Joseph, you were mentioning that you saw some of my artwork on Instagram. And that's um, what I've been doing is I've been sharing much of it on Instagram. Mm. And, um, and, and really, that's really a challenge to me because to me it feels vulnerable to do that. But mm. I'm reminded of that scripture, arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Mm. And um, I think if we don't share our creativity with the world, then the world misses out on on the, the revelation of God that we have for the world. Mm. And so it always feels vulnerable, but it's always important. Mm. And that's and that to me, I'll give you two two comments on that process from the start of this year till now. The first one is this something on the inside of me has come alive and mm. Mm. and I have, I, it, it's just opened up a whole nother dimension of conversation with God mm. and a whole nother, um, like I feel like the authentic me has come to the surface. Yeah. At another level. And it, honestly, it's just a small part of my life. It, it doesn't take much time. It's just sometimes in the evenings for half an hour or even 10 minutes, I just do a little drawing. Honestly, sometimes it's a stick figure. Mm. But, um, but that's what the Lord laid on my heart, and it's opened up all this other creativity as well, beyond drawing mm. and beyond painting. I've started doing murals again. Um, I did my first uh, mural. It was three stories high. Mm. It was my first one in uh, five years, and um, I didn't do the bottom story, but I did the two top stories. So I had to be three stories high to do this mural. I was on a big boom lift. and Wow. It was, um, it was quite cool. You can you can you can see that on on my page, but um, and it's just a prophetic word over our city. Wow! And um, but the other thing that God has been speaking to me about during this process of creativity is, um, and honestly, I'm going to try cut this short because He said so much. I mean, the first people ever anointed by the Spirit of God in the Bible were artists, mm. and their job was to create to to um, decorate the temple. Mm. The first time God, the first time the Spirit of God ever anointed a human was He anointed artists. Mm. I mean, this this is a big deal to God, and um, but He said, "You you you are an ambassador, Matt, and we are ambassadors for Christ, right? Mm. We're from another world. We're not of this world, but we're in this world, and we're ambassadors of of this world that we're from in this world that we are." Mm. And um, and God was speaking to me about there's some really important principles and important skills that every ambassador needs to have, and and uh, He started to share one of the one of the basic things that every ambassador needs to have is they need to have mm. they need to know the language and the culture of the world that they are in mm. or the country that they are in, but they also need to know the language and the culture of the country that they are from. Mm. But not only that, they need to know how to translate between the two languages and the two cultures. Mm. They need to be good interpreters and good translators. And um, and I and he reminded me of a comment my friend made, um, um, Chad Dedman. You know Chad. Mm. And um, he's and Chad said to me one day he said that that God has spoken to him and said that this generation has not heard the gospel in their own language. They've heard the gospel in English but they haven't heard it in their own language. They haven't heard wow. it in the heart language. And we started talking when he said that about how um, part of the language of this generation is the language of creativity because it captures the heart. It's mm. a heart language. It's an authentic language. 
And um, and God started to show me how this, what I'm doing in terms of exploring creativity again and, and art is I'm, I'm really learning and of course, art is not the only aspect of it. It's creativity in general. But creativity, to a large degree, is the language of this generation. And as we learn to explore creativity, I think we're going to learn how to put the gospel into a language that this generation can receive, and they will receive the gospel. Yeah. And so, and I've seen the fruit of it, man. Like, honestly, I've realized that my art is reaching a completely different audience and a mm. way wider audience than my my preaching or my speaking ministry is reaching. Mm. Mm. And um, I'm getting emails and, and, and private messages from people who haven't been to church for decades mm. or for years and years. And they're saying things like, Matt, you know, I don't believe in Jesus, but there's something about your artwork. I can feel something coming alive in me, and it's really making me think. Could you please mm. just keep doing it because it's really blessing me. Wow. And, um, and I'm realizing, man, these are people that wouldn't listen to my to my um, church language. And I'm not anti-church language. Like I, I, I love theological language. I love the scriptures. I love, I love preaching. But oh, sorry. Ben. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we good. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so. Um, so I feel like as as we start to explore our creativity, God's going to start to download to us um, the language of a generation, and then we're going to begin to mm. learn how to translate between the language of heaven and the language of this generation, and we're going to start seeing a harvest from our creativity. Wow! So Man, know, that's so epic. About it, but I I really yeah, it's it's a fun journey. Yeah. I mean, uh, we've kind of noticed that in a way, like somebody just commented here of Shilpa, like Shilpa is my sister and she does a bit of poetry. She started to yeah, put a bit more out there. Um, I started to explore spoken word and I started to yeah. make videos on that. And uh, we have another, like we were thinking of dramas and skits. And so a lot of what you're saying, I, I vibe with, you know, I'm feeling what you're saying. Yeah. 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 And, and honestly, it's, um, um, it, what it does as well is it, it doesn't the first place that language hits is not here it's not your head mm, mm. it hits your heart first mm. and then your head figures out the experience that you're having in your heart mm. so it's like the trojan horse you know like it sneaks mm. in there it gets mm. in under the radar and then you and then you're not having to try and logically explain an argument you're describing an experience now which is totally different my mm. uh, a guy i know he said this kevin deadman he said this um the man with the argument is at the mercy of the man with the experience mm. and the man with the argument is only one experience away from changing his argument. Wow. And I think creativity I releases an experience more than an argument. Mm. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so good. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, man. Oh, she says that you prophesied poetry and writing over her at a conference in 2017 in Come Bethel. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. Wow. And so, yeah, I mean, keep talking, man. We'll go with it. Creativity. What else is here? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I think, I think just the original, um, like, I love that. I mean, I feel like I'm going back to the beginning again. Hmm. In, in lots of different things. Um, but I can't get away from Genesis chapter one at the moment. And in the beginning, God created. Mm. But actually what it should say is this, in the beginning of God creating. Mm. Not in the beginning, God created full stop, but in the beginning of God creating, God mm. created. And so, um, and then eventually he created, well, very early on in the piece, he created man. Mm. In his own image, so in the image of a creator that has begun creating, mm. and and he gave us a job of uh, of subduing the earth and ruling over it, being be fruitful and multiply, subdue the earth and rule over it, and that word um, in in that word rule, it's the the picture is um, or or kind of the essence of that word is to take something and to bring order into it 
and to take something and to draw potential out of it and to bring it into its full potential. So it's, it's really a word that describes the process of taking raw material and, and making something beautiful out of the raw material. And so like, I think God in the beginning, God, in the beginning of God creating, God created man to co-create with him forever, all the way into eternity. And so there's wow. this, this original mandate that's on us as humans that if we don't step into this, we will live frustrated and unfulfilled because it's who, it's who we are to the very core of who we are. And that is we have um, been mandated, we've been designed to co-labor with God and taking his raw ingredients – and creating with him something brand new to actually take the creation somewhere to take it into an ever increasing beauty. And that's why I think the, you know, in Genesis, we start with a garden In revelation. There's a new Jerusalem, which is the garden city. Yeah. So it starts with a garden that ends with a city that looks like a garden. And, mm. and what is a city that looks like a garden? All it is, is a picture of this. I think it's a picture of, the result, the fruit of man co-laboring with God in Eden, in the garden, to transform the garden into something even more than what it was in the beginning, mm. but just as beautiful or even more beautiful. And, um, and so I think as all of us and every single one of us has a part to play, every single one of us has like a particular strand of creativity, like a creative way that God has ingrained into us. And, I think one of the biggest lies that needs to be broken is the lie of, oh, he's creative. I'm not creative. I'm more, I'm more logical or I'm more this or I'm more that. We need to just rubbish that lie because every single person is creative, so creative that to the absolute deepest core of your being, that's who you are. See you, Bonnie. And i um, just saying goodbye to someone. Uh, one of our people. Um, and I think if we're not, if we're not engaging in our creativity, we are missing. We are missing out on who we are. We're missing the mark. We're falling short. And and you know, to be honest, that is the definition of sin: is to fall short of the mark. Mm. And I'm not saying that you're, you know. Well, I don't know what I'm saying, but I'm saying that like there's, that it's life is going to be more difficult if we're not engaging in our creativity. So it's the question. The question needs to move away from. They're creative and they're not creative to how are we all creative? And so I've been wrestling lately with like, I wanted to do a creative conference, like a mm. creative gathering. I wanted to sort of gather. And, um, and then I, I've been wrestling because that's, that's, that's silly to say like, that's also categorizing some people are creative and some people aren't like, uh, but it's hard to get that message across. Like we're all creative. Hmm. Mm. I was at a Paul Scanlon conference. I don't know if you know Paul Scanlon, but he talks about leadership and stuff. He's, and uh, that was the question he kept saying the whole day is how are you creative? How are we creative? You know, yeah. and the problem with the education system at the moment doesn't explore that, that yeah. question. Um, but even just as you're speaking, I mean, creativity, most people think of painting or drawing or music or poetry, but just in simple facts like design, architecture, is all creativity. I mean, I like, uh, yeah. practical building, practical putting together of things. Yeah. Making a coffee. And so, yeah. So how, how, how do you see this message getting more, I don't know, the church kind of taking this and running with it? Um, like I, I think there's some things that we could do well with, like – one of them would be stop comparing ourselves to one another. Mm. Um, um, one of them would be like, you know, there's a fine line between being inspired by people and then and then um, um, trying to become a cookie cutter of that person mm. at the expense of who you actually are. Mm. And so I think I think some like there's a real need for some. Some process, some deep process with the Lord, to say, God, like, who am I? And and to even ask yourself that question: Who am I? And what really makes me come alive? And and to realize nothing has greater value than anything else. Like, you being you is what's of greatest value, not mm. you being something that you think is more valuable. 
So if you're mm-hmm. if if what makes you come alive, like if what really just stirs you and really just you just feel just you feel like the truest you when you've got people at your home and you're hosting them. Mm. Then honestly, like that is a key to your kind of creativity. Mm. It's a creativity that will revolve somehow around hosting people and making people feel at home. And that's no less important than a painter. That's no less important than a preacher. That's no less important than a person who's um, called to bring justice in terms of rescuing children from sex slavery. Um, it's mm. it's who are you, and you answering that question is the most important question. Mm. That's how you because you can't add, add value to the world by trying to be someone you're not. You can only mm. add value to the world and add value to the kingdom and have a crown to cast before the Lord when you are truly um, engaging in that process. And you don't need to know the answer straight away, but because every all of life is a process, and in the West we have this A to Z mentality where we just want to get there now. Mm. Um, but God's mentality is not that way. Like Jesus was born as a baby and he grew into a man and then saved the world. Like, but mm. he didn't have to. I mean, if I was the father, I would have said, just come as a 33 year old man and do it in a day. Mm. But he, he, he enjoyed his way is the process. That's mm. how he works. And so I, I don't think it's necessarily needing to have the answers at the end of this podcast, mm. but it's, it's at the end of this podcast saying, I'm going to engage on that journey. Mm. I'm going to ask those questions and I'm going to explore the answer and I'm going to have freedom in that exploration. Mm. I'm going to experiment with creativity. For me, it was like, I don't know what to do. And then, and then the clue for me was draw near to me. So honestly, I haven't spent that much time drawing. So I just started drawing and, um, Mm. and that has led to a whole bunch of other stuff for me. Wow. Yeah, man. Man, that's epic. I'm trying to stay on the subject without jumping around, but that's so good. Um, that is so good. Yeah, man. So, yeah. So I, I feel like um, I feel like as we venture into this more, we're going to see a greater and greater manifestation of the glory of God too. Mm. I feel like the the you know there's there's the artists came, people engaged in their creativity came and designed and built the temple mm. and the glory filled the temple. Like there's mm. something to do with us arising and shining and who we truly are as our creative selves and creating, co-laboring with God, using his, uh, you know, raw materials, whatever they may be, um, mm. whether they be thoughts or whether they be physical objects or whether it be a paint and a paintbrush or whatever it might be partnering with God and, and linking with wisdom and and expressing our creativity, which is ourselves. We're expressing who we are to the world and the revelation of God that we have to the world. Mm. And as we do that, I think the glory of God is going to rest on that. I remember doing a painting, um, doing a painting, a commission painting many years ago. It was one of the first paintings I ever did when I got born again. And I wrote the, the word glory just in a graffiti style. And that's the word I felt for this lady. And I left it at her doorstep. She walked up the stairs and looked at the painting and the glory of God hit her and she f- fell off her feet and she was just pinned to the ground outside her door. And, yeah. the door. and I, but I think, you know, maybe not always exactly like that, but I think that when we learn to co-labor and co-create with God, then that, then that's going to be a resting place for the glory of God, our creativity. Yeah. Yeah. Our authentic expression of him. Yes, that's right. Yeah, man. I was at a conference um, last year in, in America, and a lady had drawn a painting of, of a man and his child. And um, the lady who was running the conference came rushing in through the doors. She was busy working, and she looked at that painting and gets hit with the love of the father, has this encounter, starts crying in the back, and she starts to get healed in her heart towards her father and her life. And it was just it was crazy. That is crazy, man. <laughs> Yeah, I watched. Um, I remember being in the healing rooms at Bethel, and there was someone who, um, I, there was someone who had a, I think it was a brain tumor, and there was a painting, and the painting, um, had the word hope written on it, mm. and the guys just said, "Come and stand in front of the painting." Stood in front of the painting, looked at the word hope, 
and the brain tumor um, ran liquefied and came out of her ear. Dropped what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, man. You know, I've often joked about what it would be like if God called someone to have a bakery with awesome cookies, but when people ate the cookies, they just got healed on the spot, you know, in the restaurant or whatever. You know know what fascinates me, man, is like, like if I, like I was in um, Russia and I was at these old Orthodox um, cathedrals. And like one of them I went to, it took 25 years, six artists, 25 years to do the artwork on the inside, or mosaic artwork, wow. you know, typical Russian Orthodox iconic art, which I love. And I was in there and I just, I walked in there and I, you know, I'm just, I'm just like, wow, this is amazing art. But in that amazing art, I start having, I'm, it, my spirit is inspired. Like I feel mm-hmm. inspiration. And I start having all these creative ideas of things that have nothing to do with what I'm looking at, but because it's it's a spirit, it's an inspirited. Inspired just means inspirited. It's a the environment has the the spirit is resting on the environment, and it feels like inspiration. And I've been to cafes that are like that. I've been to um, places in our city that are like that. I've been the bushwalks that I've been to that are like that. I've been out surfing and I've had that same experience. Mm. But the the they're, um, they're places where beauty has been manifested because of creativity. Mm. And those places that they hold within them inspiration, which I think is another way of saying in some way the spirit is resting on them. Mm. And sometimes if I feel uninspired or I feel like, man, I've got like a, a painter's block or a writer's block or a speaker's block or whatever you want to call it, I feel like I need some inspiration. I would just remember, where's the last place I went to where it was like that? Mm. And um, there are places that I can go to, like places around Auckland, places around Whangarei, places in the world that I will go to, and they are places that hold within them inspiration. Wow. And, you know, I think often people go to those places and they don't actually realize what's happening, but they are benefiting from the the blessing of the Lord that's on those places. And they might not have even been created by Christians. Mm. Mm. But because the favor of God, you know, he rains down his reign on the righteous and the unrighteous. You know, mm. there's, there's an mm. aspect where, hey, he's He's pouring out his blessing, especially on those who choose to shine. Mm. Wow. Hey, um, I hope you don't mind me deviating a little bit. Still probably creativity, but you mentioned yeah. your city like a couple of times, right? You mentioned your city. I've been listening to Chris Vallotton and the way he talks about their city, the way Bethel talks about their city, and the ownership, the responsibility that they've taken of their city. I'd love, I'd love for you to share a little bit about that, like how you view that, how you see that. And as children, as sons of God, is that our responsibility? And maybe some ideas on that, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. I I think that you know we do have a responsibility for our city. Like I think it's the Nehemiah thing, you know, where each person was responsible to build their portion of the wall that was directly in front of them. Mm. And um, um, you know, I mean, I think if there maybe are some people in the world that are misplaced in terms of they're in the wrong city and they're really called to be in another city, but they're not in that city yet for whatever reason. Maybe, maybe with that exception, but like if you're in a place, especially if you're called to that place, mm. then absolutely you have a responsibility for that, for that space, for that community, for that city, for that town, for that street, for that neighborhood. Um, you have a responsibility. And I think what that looks like in practical terms is, again, like what is, what is my creativity? Um, mm. what what is in my hands you know like what what are the what is in my hands and what is happening in this city that I'd like to see change that I'm really burning for and um, even if you're in a church I think if you're in a church you have a responsibility to be adding some kind of strength to that church to that spiritual community mm. what, whatever you're a part of whatever you're in you're in it to bless it mm. you're at that we're Wherever you are, that place should benefit because you're there. Mm. Um, and how does it benefit? It benefits when you are being you. Mm. And when you realize what's in your hand to give to that place. Um, and so, uh, yeah, 
I mean, that can obviously manifest in all sorts of different ways, but mm. um, there's different ways to find out the answer to, that, to those questions. One of them would be, you know, obviously what am I burning for and what am I good at or what am I becoming good at or what do I want to be good at? Mm. Um, the other one would be what, what do I just find it really difficult to tolerate? What do mm. I find really frustrating that I just, I just, I must see change in this. Mm. Um, and or what do I find myself complaining about lots? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Often mm. people complain about the very thing that they're actually called to change. Yeah. And um, so if you if you uh, if you've been complaining lately, um, of course, complaining only really, you know, uh, reveals your capacity to hear the, the voice of the devil, <laughs> but, or to notice what he's doing. But it also, you know, in noticing the devil, that's not always a bad thing because in noticing what he's mm. doing, you know, not everyone notices what you notice, but you notice what you have the power to change. Mm. Yeah. So um, I, I know, I know, um, you know, sometimes I find it a little bit funny that um, the people, I, you know, being a pastor, sometimes I hear people's complaints. <laughs> mm. um, and um, and almost ninety percent. Oh, I mean, maybe a hundred percent of the time, their complaints are complaints against the very thing that they are born with grace to change. Mm. And I, I find myself continually saying, "Well, what are you going to do about that?" Because I mean, you you're obviously gifted in this area. So what are you doing? And it's like, oh no, 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 I don't have time to you know do that. Well, well, make some time because you've got the grace to make a change in this area. Mm. That's the only way. I, and I say to them, I don't even notice what, what you've noticed, what you're pointing out, I haven't even noticed. Mm. Which tells mm. me I have less grace than you to bring change. So don't bring it to me. You know, I'm not the guy with grace to change this. You're the guy with grace to change this. So you change it. Mm. You, you add your chicken to the table. You add your dish to the table because otherwise we're never going to taste that dish. Mm. And um, it reminds me of the dream my friend had. The dream was this big banquet, this big feast. And um, she was like, this is, uh, my wife has just walked in the room and uh, here she is. And um, she, she's not currently aware that I'm on a podcast. <laughs> uh, but um, yes. Yeah. So I'm going to be, you, we're going to be like, do you need to pause minutes. it? We're going to be a couple, couple more minutes. Hey. Yeah. Well, where are the time you got? We had five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just I'm just looking at my wife and thinking, um, you know, just the wisdom of God would be let's do five more minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. And, uh, yeah. So, um, um, so I was, I've just been distracted by her beauty. Yeah. <laughs> Scoring the points. Um. I think you were. We were switching. We were going to switch subjects because we were just talking about. Obviously, I'm drawing blank now. Oh yeah, the chicken on the table thing, right? Bringing your individual thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So your friend's yeah, dream. Yeah, that's right. So, um, big banquet, all this food on the table, and she was looking at it, going, "This is such a lame banquet. There's not even any chicken on the table. Like, what is a banquet? What is a feast with no chicken? This is so lame. Like, there's all these other things." But you can't call it a feast if there's not chicken on the table. And she was kind of like annoyed. And then she felt the spirit say, look in your hands. And in her hands was a big plate of chicken. Mm. And then God said, you know, the reason it's not on the table is because you're not putting it on the table. <laughs> so put it on the table and then it will be the feast that you, you imagined it to be. Wow. Yeah. So, That's yeah, so I, cool. I think that sometimes we're blind to what we carry. Mm. And when we're blind to what we carry, we often find ourselves complaining about the absence of the thing that's in our hands, mm. but we, we just haven't seen what's in our hands yet. And so the first, the first thing, the first thing, especially if you find yourself complaining, complaining a little bit, don't be condemned listening to this, but if you find yourself complaining a little bit, the first thing that I recommend you do is just to ask the Lord what he's placed in your hands. Mm. Mm. And it will require some creativity and some vulnerability and some risk and some bravery and courage to explore that fully. But you can do it. Mm. Bam. 
So, I mean, I know you got to go. Are you good with just praying for everybody <clears throat> before you leave? Yeah, just saying yeah. a prayer for everyone here and everyone that's going to listen? Yep. So if you're listening or if you're um, at whatever time you're listening, this prayer still works. <laughs> <laughs> um, just, uh, just put your, just put your hands out like you're ready to catch something. And Father, right now I thank you that you are good. I thank you that you're a good God in a good mood, doing good things, and that's the gospel. And right now, Lord, I declare your peace. I declare shalom. I declare nothing missing, nothing broken over every person. God, I thank you for what you've placed in their hands. I thank you for who you've designed them to be. I thank you, God, that we have been hidden in you with Christ. And when Christ, who is our life, appears, we too will appear with you in glory, God. You've kept us safe and hidden in you. The true us, the original blueprint of who you made us to be is safe in you. And God, I'm asking you to show every person your glory, and in that glory that they would find themselves. In that glory they would find themselves. I declare over every person right now the spirit of wisdom and revelation to know you, to find you, and to find themselves in Jesus' name. I thank you for every person being creative. I break the lie of any person listening that has believed the lie that they're not creative. I say that you are creative because you're designed and you're made in the image of a creator. And I declare wisdom and revelation to know your kind of creativity in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, there you go, guys. I hope that blessed you, creativity. It was an awesome subject. Matt, I just want to thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for being here with us. Yeah, and man, um, sure. everyone else, guys, that's the end of the podcast for today. We're going to have another one probably tomorrow, so I'll keep you posted. But, Matt, you can stay with me for a second. Everyone else, I'll talk to you guys later. Faith and patience. Faith and patience. Patience means allow it to happen. Stay the same. Stay persistent. Keep going. Faith, know that it can happen at any moment. Get excited because it can happen at any moment. You are so close. Don't quit now. Keep pushing. You got this.